turn to Genesis, if you would, 2-7, and we're going to talk about this body that Christ has that is so unique from other bodies that was able to bear our sins on his body. Well, where did the whole body idea come from? And you're going to be surprised, maybe, if, unless you sit in a good Bible teaching church, you're going to be surprised at all that's involved in the plan of God to get us to where we are today. Genesis 2-7, the Lord God, remember that when you enter the second manuscript in Genesis, which is Genesis 2-4 through the end of the book, there's a second manuscript written by Moses. The first manuscript is 1-1 through 2-4. <clears throat> In the first manuscript of Genesis, the word about the word for God is Elohim. In Hebrew, when you and it's on your paper, when you have the ending in an I am, that's what? Plural. So this is where you get the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. <clears throat> now we had Elohim in the first manuscript, but never Yahweh. The word Lord is never used in the first manuscript. It's all over the second manuscript. From Genesis 2-4 to the end, you're going to hear this phrase, Lord God, a lot. And the Lord refers to Christ. The second member of the Godhead, the word Lord refers to the second member of the Godhead who is the supreme center of the plan of God out of eternity past, eternal life conference. How do we know it? Well, he's all over the Bible. We're doing a study. Listen, if you would like to get in a good study the next semester, let's say our next semester starts in uh, October, not October, November. It starts in November. And it's the second half of the study of uh, the Messianic passages. And this is a good one because this starts up and covers all of the great Messianic prophecies of the great prophets, the major, major and minor ones, and takes us to the first coming of Christ. It, you're more than welcome to enter into that. Uh, just uh, see Rhonda or, or somebody, Al or myself, and uh, sign up to get into that November one. It'll be November, December, January, and then we'll start a new course. But it's an excellent study uh, for you. And even though you missed the first half, uh, that's a 100 series. You, you, you move into a whole other realm in the second, the 200 level. They're all 200 level. But. Then the Lord God formed... That's Yatsar, and that's really important, Yatsar. It means to sculpture something. He is, you know, he's the potter and you're the clay and business. Formed, that's, that's Yatsar on your paper. The Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. That's number one. Number two, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That should be lives in the Hebrew and man became a living being. There's three things there. Body, soul, and spirit. There are three things there. Body, soul, and spirit. Or I, I think last week I put on your paper body, breath, and being. Just to do bees for you. Right? So what you have, listen, what, let me tell you what you have that you might not be able to see unless you pay attention. What you have in verse 7 is the trichotomy of man. The trichotomy of man. Man has first, write this down on your paper, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Man is a body, soul, and spirit. That, Even though he's one unit, he's made up of three parts. Now, in the New Testament, the Greeks made this very clear in the Greek language. In the Old Testament, they saw man as one unit with three parts. 
In the Greek, we see three parts of one unit. <laughs> see, see, say, say thing. You, you have to look at it. So, notice on your paper, I put some, I put some uh, Hebrew ideas with you. For example, the word formed is uh, dealing with the, the body of man. That's Adam. It's yatser. It's a callum perfect. Notice all of the verbs in here are cal callum perfects. In other words, God is wor working the plan out in human history. Formed uh, man. Notice the word ha. He's not laughing. That's a definite article in Hebrew. The man. And it's the man that we're talking about as we know Adam. In fact, the word man is the word Adam. Notice Adam. I, th that's the word, Hebrew word for man. Uh, what's interesting also in the Hebrew language, and you always pay attention to it, if there's a direct object attached to a, a, a word, because it's, it's like uh, a, a sign, a blinking sign that tells you some, you know, a pointer that goes like, bridges out, turn here or something, a pointer, a direct object, and there's a direct object on the word the man. And so that's a big deal in the, in the Hebrew language. It, 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 here's what we would no, normally do in English. We would color it or something. We would highlight it. It's highlighted. From the ground. And breathed. He formed the man. Then he breathed. Breathed. Into his what? Nostrils. Everybody know what nostrils are? All right. I know you say, you say, well, that's kind of stupid. I mean, of course, everybody knows they have nostrils. Huh? What, 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 what did God put? How did God put the spirit of life in man? Nostrils. Through what? Nostrils. Through what? Nostrils. You got that? Because most people don't. Most people do not know that. They do not know that. They think it comes lower on the body. Mm -hmm. Where does the breath of life come to? From what to what? Comes from God through the nostrils to man, right? All right. All I can do is read it to you people. Into the nostrils, the breath of lives, Nisha Mahaim. See the I am on the end of the word Haim, that's the word life. Nisha Ma is the word breath. Haim is the word life. Right? Listen, they doubled the Y. It's a Dagish Forte, that's a big deal. They doubled it for emphasis and then put an I am on the end of it, which is plural. So that means lives. Do you understand? All right. The man became, he has a body with a nose. Agreed? God breathed the breath of life through his nostrils, and man became a living, see the word hayah? See, you can see that's the word living, right? In the Hebrew, being is, is nephesh, that's the word soul. Nefesh is the word soul, and man became a living soul or being. Let's see, did I, did I have prayer? Have I had prayer? You don't remember. I had prayer. I don't remember. <laughs> I didn't remember if I did or not, because once I get engaged, you can forget the rest of the stuff. Genesis 2.7, that's a big verse in the Bible. Genesis 2.7 established the divine trichotomy pattern of creation of mankind. Watch this. The word form, what did he form? A body. Breath. He breathed, what? The spirit into man. And man, man's soul came alive. You understand that? That, that's all in, that's 2 7. I mean, I haven't told you anything that's not in 2 7. 
Our lesson today is going to look at six aspects of the importance of Nisha Mahayim involved in our birth and our death. Nisha Mahayim, I put it on your paper rather than something else because I just like saying it. I mean, who doesn't like to say Nisha Mahayim? I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just like you're in a Hebrew restaurant or something and they bring you this great meal out. I mean, bring me a Nisha Mahayim. <laughs> now, I don't know that they serve anything like that in a Hebrew restaurant. I wouldn't know, but we're going to look at six things. This Nisha Mahayim is involved in our birth, right? And involved in our death. Watch this. Job 12, 10. In whose hands, God, is the life of every living thing, day five and six, day five and six, day creation day, five and six, and the breath of all mankind. The breath of what? All mankind. The breath of what? Life. Right? The breath of life of what? Some? Mm -mm. All mankind. The Hebrew word, Nisha Mahayim, breath of lives, refers to individual self-existence. A self-existent life. You know how important that is to you? Listen to me. Your personal name is what gets recorded in the book of life. Think about that. Right? And it's connected to Nisha Mahayim. Because Nisha Mahayim, in the reality, is the self existence of one's personal life. Job, Job, uh, Ecclesiastes in the third chapter talks about there's a time to be what? Born and a time to what? Who's got that time? Who's got that clock? God. Right? I mean, who's got every event under the heavens? God's got them timed. You got the event and got the time. Think about that. There's a time to be born and a time to die. Right? You go to a cemetery, you're gonna, they're going to give you the time to, of birth and the time of death, and they're going to put a little dash, right? A hyphen. And that's your whole life. <laughs> Think about that. All the, everything you've ever done is between the two dates, and it's just a hyphen. Well, you'll think about it more as you get older. The Spirit of God, listen to Job 33, 4. You know why I quoted Job a lot? Because Job and the book of Genesis go together in the time slot of the writings. The Spirit of God has made me, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives, my, gives me life. The Holy Spirit made me, along with God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy, the Holy Spirit has made me, And the breath of the Almighty God has given me life. That's Job. That's how Job's talking. Is Job's talking theology. <clears throat> Four doctrinal truths that are established by Nisha Mahayim for mankind. These things you ought to pay attention to. For example, the breath of life, Nisha Mahayim, of all mankind comes from the Lord. Genesis 2, 7. The Lord God. The Lord God. Yahweh Elohim. Secondly, the breath of life gives self-existence to individual life. 
time to be born and time to die. What, what, what is that? You know what controls both ends of that? You know what controls both ends of that? Nisha Mahayim. Nisha Mahayim. At birth, he's going to breathe into your nostrils the breath of life. And at death, he's going to remove it. Nisha Mahayim is going to be removed. Oh, well. You should read Revelation 3 5, 2015, and Philippians 4 3. These are, these are really important when it comes to that because your personal name is going to be, as a believer, your personal name is going to be written in the book of life, written in the book of life, and it will be there forever. Agree? Forever. You should read those passages on that subject. Here's the third idea about the breath of life. The breath of life comes from the Lord God through the nostrils, not the genitals. How about that? Did I make that up? No, I didn't. Where'd I get that idea? Bible. What's the Bible say? What's the Bible say? I tell you, if there's one thing we've learned through the COVID, is not what does the CDC say? They're all over the place. What's the Bible say? Job 33, 4 would be an answer to that. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gave me life. Where's he, where's he, where's he breathe it in? And where's he breathe it out? It goes in through the what? And, and, and where does it leave? Nostrils. Nostrils. Yeah, you know, I didn't make this up. I'd have probably done it a different way. Here's the fourth. Breath of life is given the same way. Watch this now, because people don't pay attention. They don't read the Bible. They just play with it. Like a two-year-old. They don't read it. They just play with it. The breath of life is given the same way after Adam sinned as before it. You know the original sin of Genesis 2.17. <laughs> now listen to me. The life support system is shut off. Everybody's heard about shut the life, the life support system off. Agreed? Or the cord is cut, the umbilical cord is cut. Either way, man breathes on his own. You understand that? Well, how come you understand the one don't understand the other? I mean, you do understand if he's on the life support system, you shut the machine off, right? If he breathes, he's, in, he's, he's still in, right? If he doesn't, it's gone. The same with the, the cord. This is life support. It's the... Jesus have a belly button? Did Adam have a belly button? No. Did Eve have a belly button? No. Not Jesus, man. I know, what do I know about that? But I know Adam didn't, and I know Eve didn't. Right? All right. You need, to, you, need to, you need to pay attention to Psalms 39, 11. I'm going to do one more, and then we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back and finish this. You need to, you need to finish this. Watch, watch point number two. God's doctrinal pattern of giving the same Nisha Mahaim, breath of lives, to every human being is revealed by different forms of the creation of the human body. Now pay attention to this, because this is big stuff right here. For example, Adam's body came from the dust of the ground, agreed? Yes. yes. But the same Nisha Mahayim. In other words, it came out of Yatsar, the body came out of Yatsar, but the breath of God breathed through his nostrils, you understand? All right. Here's Eve's body. Eve's body comes from Adam's rib. But the same Nisha Mahayim is working with Bana, 
the word for uh, Eve's body, the form of uh, Eve's body is the, is the Hebrew word bana. It's a different form. It's a different form of creation. Do you understand that? Where does Eve's body come from? Adam's rib, right? Where did Adam's body come from? Dust of the ground. Do you understand? All right. But they both got the same Nisha Mahayim. Do you understand? All right. Now we look at, now we got Abel, Cain. Usually we say Cain and Abel. We got Abel, Cain, and Seth's body. And they come from procreation. They come from Yada. We're talking about the body. The body came from Yada. That's translated in the English, new. K-N-E-W. Adam knew his wife. And, and it's, a, it's a euphemism for sexual relationship. Had, re, had sexual relationships with Eve and she became pregnant. Well, you should read this stuff. You know? So now we have birth coming through the womb. Right? But Nisha Mahayim is the same for Abel, Cain, and Seth as it was for Adam and Eve. You understand that? Oh my God. The breath of God comes to the human life through the what? Through the nostrils, not the... You can say it. Doesn't come through the genitals. There's no clear teaching in the Word of God than that. I don't care what science says. We've learned not to trust that as well, right? Trust the Word of God. Nisha Mahaim, the breath of lives, comes from the Lord, God, through the nostrils, and mankind becomes a living soul. Isaiah 2.22. Now we're getting down further towards our day of history. And here's what Isaiah teaches. Whose breath of life is in his what? In his what? Yeah, I heard you the first time. I just like hearing it. Here's how prevalent this was in my day. My day. If we weren't sure somebody was alive or not, what did we do? If we could get, and almost all women in that day carried mirrors. Do you still carry mirrors? They had these little compact things. No, you don't. I mean, you do everything out of, do they, do we look at internet or something to see yourself or what? I don't know, but every woman in my day, every girl, every woman, girl, whoever you dated, had one of these little things, you popped it open and it had stuff that you could do that with and then had a mirror, right? I shouldn't leave open in questions. I lose my service. But you would put that mirror under their nose to, to see if they still had a breath, is my point. You know, I don't know who does that anymore. We just grab some machine, stick it on them. And, but anyhow. Well, let me, let, let's close with that. And let's take a break, because you need a break. I need a break. And we come back. Don't miss this now. I'm going to wrap this thing up for us to really take a good heart, good look at this. Because I'm going to tell you, the average person in the average world doesn't pay any attention to the Word of God, does not know what we're teaching here today, and will never do it unless his pastor understands some Hebrew.
Let's see, one of, one of the prominent questions that I've gotten at halftime is how do we, how, how do we justify, uh, how do we identify the baby in the mother's womb? All right? And here's how you identify it. It's, it's human life because it's in the human. It's not, if it was a cow, it would be a cow, right? If it was in the cow, if it's a pig, it'd be a pig. It's just a, it depends on your category. You understand what I'm saying? We're in a category of human life, right? So the baby inside there is human life, right? It's t but listen, it, Nisha Mahayim runs through the mother's nostrils into the baby. Do you understand that? Say that again. The, the life support system to the child is the mother, yeah. right? right? Is the mother. And if, and so we call that, we call that, of course that's human life, right? It's, it's not any other category of creation. It's human life. And what is being done by God in there is what he's doing is he's forming, let, let the, I'll, you'll see it in the second half, what he's doing inside the womb is a miracle. You know what he's doing? He's forming the body. And the Bible calls it an absolute miracle. Everybody that wrote about a baby being formed inside a mother's womb, with God putting the body, it's all about the, putting the body together. And the whole life support system of the child is through the mother. If she dies early, we've got a real problem, right? And if they can't get that baby out, the baby's got a real problem. It depends on how that situation works. So, but under normal conditions, she gives birth, right? She gives birth. And what you have, the difference between human life existence inside the womb and outside the womb, what you have here is self-existence. The, the capability to be able to exist on its own. Do you understand that? Self-existence. It's about self-existence. It's not, it's not, is that a human baby? Of course that's a human baby. It's not a pig. It's not a cow. You understand? We understand the category it's in, but we also understand the vulnerability it's in. And at some point, that baby, and, and who knows, that baby can make it outside. Sometimes it can't. Sometimes it dies inside, Right? We call it a baby? Yeah, because we put, we're, listen, we attach all kinds, we, you don't do it with uh, animals, you don't, with, you know, that's, that's a baby kitten in there. You don't do that. That's a baby calf. You don't talk that way on, in other areas unless they're born. And they say, that's a baby calf, that's a baby cat. You, you talk that way. You understand? What you don't probably understand, day five and day six, See, you, you for, you've forgotten all that already of the Nisha Mahayim. Is It affects everything born on, everything that was created on day five and day six is under Nisha Mahayim. Everything. Well, did Eve get a sin nature before Adam? Do what? Did Eve get a sin nature before, before Adam? Not before Adam. N nobody had it before Adam. So when did they acquire a sin nature? After, after Adam sinned. Okay, Adam, yeah. Man, nobody gets one prior to it. Well, anyhow, well, let's talk a little bit. I don't know. Listen, I'm not here to change your mind, except about the Word of God. Right? Yes. I'm just, study the Bible and see what it says and do with it what you want to do with it, you know? Man, that's what I do. Man. I can only tell you, I can only tell you what Moses tells me, I tell you. <laughs> what you want to do, it's your business. But you should want to pay attention to it, right? You should pay attention to all this stuff, all right? Your, your name, look, look, not only that, but look at, in, in the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, same with Jesus Christ. Same with Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Eight days after birth. Eight days after birth. 
you named them and circumcised them. You understand that? You know why eight days? Make sure the baby kid is self-existent. Well, anyhow. Well, anyhow. I'm to point number three. It's just something for you to consider if you've never heard this stuff before. The divine pattern of Nisha Mahaim, the breath of lives, did not change as a result of Adam's sin in Genesis 2.17 or the five judgments associated with it. You remember there was die and you will die judgment, right? And then there were five additional ones given. One on the serpent, one on Satan, one on Adam, one on Eve, one on the earth, all right? Come on now. Look. Look, it's okay. Look, it's okay. Climate claim. Just, just for a moment, climate change. Here's the problem with the argument. Of course there's climate change. You know why? It has nothing to do with man. You know why? It has to do with one man, but not all mankind. You know why there's climate change? Because the earth is wearing out. The heavens and the earth are wearing out because of Adam's sin. Paul discussed it in great detail in the first eight chapters of the book of Romans. He, he, he discussed all of it. The problem with the argument over climate change, listen, there's all kinds of that. Listen, my grandfather was a very good farmer in the 40s, and he farmed probably to the 70s, and then retired. He was a really good farmer. And I can't tell you how many times we would go out and dig down in the different fields and look to see how deep the topsoil was. Because it depended how much you plowed Marion, we used to plow the earth. They don't plow the earth anymore. There's not enough. We used to sample the fields. So we dig down, see how far the topsoil, so that we could turn it over, disc it down, and have a new, a new crop on it. Then we would, if like if it was corn, we only took half the stock of the corn, we took the top stock of the corn, we salvaged the corn, and foddered the rest to feed the cows. Agreed? This is old school farming. And then we plowed the rest of it, we, we disked the rest of it under, and then when this next season came, we, we, plowed again, we plowed up again. Listen, our topsoil would go six, seven, eight inches deep. You can't find that today. They had a little topsoil going on. Therefore, they're feeding the land like crazy with all kinds of stuff and trying to figure out a way. They say, listen, at some point, we're going to lose our topsoil. How are we going to stay alive? And so they're trying to figure out ways to plant on cement and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, well, the fertilizer, like, hey, they're coming up with whole new things on how to fertilize her because they haven't got the soil to do it. You know why? People go, I don't know. I can tell you why. The earth and the heavens are both getting old. They're... They, they're aging in their category like trees and flowers and people of the earth. There's a real strong argument for climate change, but it's not due to man. 
Man's behavior is not going to change any of this. Man's behavior is not going to change any of it. Listen, the only way you can help yourself is to get saved. Listen, how did this ever happen to the, God created the heavens and the earth? Adam's sin. Adam's sin, in fact, there's five judgments, and you can't get away from them. Well, what chapter am I in? Second chapter. When we get to the third chapter, I'll teach it to you. Whenever that is. Listen, I know some of you have heard this for years and years, but listen, there's so many people who have never heard this, and so I've just got to walk them through it. You've got to be patient with us. This is important for them to know this stuff. They're not being taught it anywhere else. And, and that's okay. Look, I, I'm not responsible for everybody. Everybody, <laughs> I'm responsible for my pulpit. Watch this now. See, you can read about those five judgments in the third chapter, 13 through 19. After... And, and, and Horton has some good questions. We'll answer them all. As we, by the time we get to chapter 4, I'll have all this stuff answered. After Adam's original sin, the formation of the body, this is my subject matter, came through the womb of the woman. It, didn't, it wasn't before, right? Did Adam's body come from that? Did Eve's body come from that? But Cain, Abel, and Seth, their body comes from, yeah, right, here we are, right? So how did, how did Adam, how did Adam's self-life existence come from when, he was, when his body was made from the dust of the earth? breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. A man became a living being, right? How did Eve do it? How did Cain and Abel? Same pattern, you understand? The same pattern of self-existent life is in all three categories. Do you understand that? Well, you should because it's biblical. It's, it's just biblical. I mean, 